Now let us pray, or I will pray on our behalf, the prayer that we may understand Scripture. God of justice and joy, we turn to your word to hear your will and your wisdom for our times. Open our hearts and minds by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we might hear what you are saying to the church through Christ, our friend and Savior. Friends, our scripture reading today is a well-known one to us, the story of the Annunciation, the story of angel Gabriel coming to Mary. It's Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Hear now God's word to us. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Will you pray with me? Jesus, we celebrate this story of your mother Mary and her meeting with the angel Gabriel and hearing this great news of your birth. We pray that we may have open hearts like Mary to receive this news of great joy. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. At our kayak college and young adult meeting last Monday night, we had five young adults with us in our home, and I asked them to share which stories they appreciated surrounding the Christmas story, which were some of their favorites. We talked about the star that led the Magi. We also talked about the wonder of angels, both the angel Gabriel and the angels that met the shepherds in the fields before they were led to meet the infant Jesus in the manger. Today's story is my favorite among all the Christmas stories. I love the announcement to Mary from the angel Gabriel that she will give birth to Jesus. I think I feel a special connection with this story because I have two daughters. And Kate, who is 15, is about the age that Mary would have been when the angel came. Young women were engaged at a much earlier age than now, and Mary could have been 13 to 16 years old. But even if society allowed young women to be engaged at an early age in the days of Jesus, it still was a monumental message for a young woman to receive when the angel notified her that she would become pregnant by a miracle of the Holy Spirit, and she would give birth to the Son of God. Mary is surprised to hear that she will give birth even though she is a virgin. She asks Gabriel how this will take place. He explains that the Spirit of God can do anything. He says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. The beauty of Mary is that she takes in this news and responds with an open heart. 
Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. I hesitate to reflect too much on the story of Mary and Gabriel. Sometimes stories should be simply told and enjoyed. On Christmas Eve, we will hear more of the stories surrounding Christmas, and we will focus on listening to the stories and singing songs. It's nice just sometimes to hear the stories be told. But as we do reflect on this story of Mary and Gabriel, what we see clearly is Mary's pure heart. She embodies the innocence of youth and the openness of true faith. She is human and has her questions about the miracle that will happen when she becomes pregnant, but she responds with a grateful heart. She soon will face the scandal of being an unwed pregnant teenager, but she is ready to face this challenge with courage and trust in the goodness of God. She has found favor with God. During different seasons of my life and ministry journey, I've spent significant time working with children, youth, and young adults. I know it's common for people who are middle-aged like me or older to look at young people and share our concerns. Our favorite now is to complain about the impact of technology on the young. Although there are reasons to always be protective as parents and grandparents or mentors to younger people, I find it most helpful to be inspired by the young. The story of a young couple that gives birth to an infant son is to inspire us to embrace the wisdom of the young and the passion of young hearts and even youthful romance. As we read in Luke, Mary and Elizabeth are blessed with miraculous pregnancies, and Zechariah, as we learned last week, is a priest who is humbled and loses his voice for a season. Angel Gabriel shows compassion for Mary and is gracious with her. He knows her heart and understands her questions. I wonder if what we need most in our world today is to allow our hearts to become young and open like Mary. Mary has a spirit of openness and joy. She has the gift of youthful zeal, and she is excited to become the mom of the Savior of the world. She and Joseph will learn soon enough that the world can be a dangerous place, but they are courageous and full of hope as they eventually welcome Jesus into the world. We hear in Mary's song, also known as Mary's Magnificat, her great joy in being the mother of the Son of God. Remember this part? My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Friends, this season of Christmas is a time for us to be hopeful and joyful as we embrace the miracle of Christ's birth. It's a time to hear the message of Gabriel, do not be afraid. We do not need to hide or deny our fears or worries. It's natural to worry about the future of the world or what dangers might be out there for the next generations. But even as we feel our worries, maybe we can awaken to a message of joy. The light of Jesus inspires us to embrace the present and future with hope and joy. When I look at my two daughters and the young people in our church, when I see baby George, the son of Anthony and Amanda Stevens, and the youngest member in our church community, I am filled with joy. I see that God is active in our world, bringing new life into an uncertain world, but a world of great potential and great love. This weekend is special for my family and many families in Newburgh, as I mentioned earlier, because it is the weekend when many girls and young women and a few boys and young men participate in the Newburgh Nutcracker put on by the Shehalem Dance Academy. This year, my daughter Kiara is performing in the party scene, which is a joy for her and certainly a joy for us. And I told you already, but it is a great show this year. It really is fun. To me, the girls and young women performing in the Nutcracker remind me of the beauty and joy of Mary and her creative heart and strong spirit that enabled her to say yes to God's plan for her life. One of the best parts of the Nutcracker in Newburgh is that all the proceeds go to support local charities in Newburgh like a family place 
which is a preschool and relief nursery in town for lower income families. I know it may be easy to view this Christmas season as a time of busyness and consumerism, but I, cho I choose to see it as a time of cultural generosity and an opportunity for humanity to be at our best as we give gifts, celebrate family and friends, and reach out to those who are vulnerable. I love Christmas because of the potential of great joy that this season brings to people who know Jesus and those who do not know him, but maybe can taste of his goodness as they hear of the story of Mary, the angel Gabriel, and the miraculous gift of the Son of God. May we share this message of joy. May we find joy in the youthful zeal of Mary and the great potential of a world led by love rather than fear. This morning, as I was waking up, God gave me one more thing to highlight. And it had to do with when we read the passage where it talks about favor, that Mary found favor with God. Mary found favor with God. And maybe it's our, it's our thought that, well, Mary was special. She was such a, a young, innocent woman who was special in her faith, and therefore God showed favor. But what God put on my heart to share with someone here, and maybe more than one, is that you have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. God has a purpose and plan for your life. Mary didn't have any idea what this would mean for her, but she received it with an open heart and and there's so many young people, so many people of all ages that just need to hear that message. You have favor with God. I even think that when we pray sometimes, God whispers into our ear, you're my favorite. And then someone else prays and God says, you're my favorite. And someone else prays and says, you're my favorite. That's God's heart for us. We have found favor with God, and because of that message, we can go out and spread the love of God with others. And you may say, well, what about the houseless? What about the vulnerable? What about people who have gone through so much hardship and pain and grief? Friends, they need to hear us say to them, if we're walking alongside as a comforter and support, you have found favor with God. You are beloved of God. I will walk with you on your journey of suffering, and I will help empower you. And I will help encourage you, and I will help in your healing journey. For some of those people who I'm caring for right now, and maybe you are too, who are on hospice, they need to hear, you have found favor with God. And that favor will eventually lead you into the arms of angels who will take you up to heaven and will celebrate you there. We always need to hear favor. No matter what situation a person is in, they need to hear that message that they have found favor with God. And if we can do anything in this Christmas season, let's share that with one another. Let's receive it for ourselves. Let's share it especially with the most vulnerable who need to hear that God loves them and that God has a purpose and plan for their life, even a life eternal that they may join soon. That is the joy of the Christmas season. That's why the incarnation happened, is to give us that message that we have found favor with God and that God has a purpose and plan for our life to restore us to who we already are, our deep goodness, our deep truth that we are children of God and loved by God. And how much better to do that than to see an infant child, a baby, who reminds us that deep down we are the sacred gift of God, all born of God and loved by God. May we receive that gift this season. May it be a gift that gives us great joy. Will you pray with me? Jesus, thank you again for the gift of your birth. We celebrate your mom, Mary, who was such a young woman when she, reserved, when she heard this great news. Thank you that she responded with an open heart. And thank you that she shows us that we all can receive that message that message from the angels, that message from you, God, that, that we are favored, that we are loved, 
that you have a purpose and plan for our lives. That as long as we have breath on this earth, there's purpose. And even when we go on to heaven, there's purpose. That we can just live into this love and this joy this Christmas season and share it with one another. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you.